show. What's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, I wanted to share with you all my method for recording electric guitar. This is the hard way because the easy way would be just to run it DI straight into like VST amp rack or guitar rig or some sort of plug-in setup. And then you have infinite flexibility on the back end. But that song you just heard was one of my compositions. Uh, I just busted it out real quick. So beginning to end, it was like less than 30 minutes. And we'll get into Cubase and I'll show you. But the hardware setup I have is I plug this microphone right here. This is a Shure SM57 into my interface. And then that goes right on this little stand right here, this Proline stand that's like a guitar amp stand, right? Boom. Uh, almost dead center. And anyone that tells you, you know, oh, you got to mess with the angles. Yeah, if you don't like the sound, mess with the angles. But it's not really that critical. I'm telling you, uh, especially when you're dealing with distorted guitars, you know, it could be four inches away, five inches away, six inches away. And there will be some slight tonal differences, but the main difference will be how well you play. And so you'll be able to hear all of my mistakes and nitpick them when we get into Cubase and I show you what I did to make this track. But uh, how you play is the determining factor. So if you want my two cents, my opinion, keeping in mind that opinions are like assholes and everyone has one and they all stink, uh, the way to do it is to take an SM57 and basically just put a dead center on your favorite speaker cabinet, uh, plug a guitar into it, and let her rip. Uh, that's the way that... Uh, most recording should be done, honestly. Just point a microphone at the sound source and go for it. So uh, let's get into Cubase, and I'll show you guys what's up. Okay, so we're here in the project, and I'll just show you what I did real quick. And uh, the cool thing about electric guitars is that they sound awesome, and they're already compressed. I mean, look at that waveform. If that's not compressed, I don't know what it is. So how did I produce this, uh, if you could call it that, in the 30 minutes that I spent I uh, doing this? I doubled these guitars, so these are the rhythm guitars, two and one. So let's just listen to those. And I'll... <laughs> And what I like to do when I double rhythms is uh, make them left and right, obviously. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, how I do it. And then if we go into the mix console, this is going to be kind of sad. But I was doing this so fast that I realized that I didn't actually put any processing on the guitars that run the rhythm. I thought they sounded fine out of the amp. And so I chose to... Oh, I cut... I reduced the gain on this one in the pre... But that's about all. Uh, so it ends up sounding like no. <laughs> And uh, it's kind of intense, no doubt, but uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so here's a quick tip for y'all. So we have these two. No processing whatsoever, but all three guitars go to a guitar bus. And here's the guitar bus. And I was messing around with this reefer, which is actually really cool. And I have a cut here also. And uh, let's see, what else do I have? I have a high-pass filter. So you can high-pass filter guitars, and it's actually at 100 hertz, so it's pretty... Uh, beefy high pass filter because there's not a lot of low end information in guitar so any like low end you get will end up just being like uh, gross sounding is the technical term I think you could also high pass them here on the channel strip uh, you know changes the high pass turn it on changes the high pass turn it on and that should theoretically do n absolutely nothing so if we A, B it, because I'm high-passing the whole group, maybe it'll do something. I'm not sure, but I was going fast, so I just high-passed the group. So let's listen to the guitars now. Not much change to my ears. Uh, and then we have the bass. I recorded the bass, and even though this is about how to record electric guitars, I'll just show you what I did with the bass real quick, because it's kind of a neat technique. Bass one is straight up DI. And then base two, I use the same exact thing. So it's actually, if I delete this, then I bring this down and I hold the alt key and the control key so it stays in time. This is just an exact duplicate and I cut it out so it's just all like nasty, gross mid-range. And I put in this VST bass amp plugin. So that sounds something like this. 
just a little more growly, mid-rangey. So I mix these two tones together, even though they're the exact same track, and they form what ends up becoming my bass guitar track. Uh, the drums, they're just contact drums uh, with some poorly chosen patterns, especially in here. If I were doing this for like reels, I would take these toms because they're uh, tom center, tom low. The low end information really kind of muddies up the mix for sure. Uh, and that part you can hear, boom, 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 boom. Not my favorite. But uh, we're going fast, so who gives a care? And then finally, let's get to the guitar lead, the main show. Uh, everything's bypassed. I mean, that was the high-pass filter I put on earlier. The only insert I have, and this is just to demonstrate, you can use VST amp rack instruments after the fact, especially if you're using time-based effects like reverb or delay. So that's exactly what I did. There was a gate. I was trying it out, but it wasn't working for me, so it's off. But then in post effects, which of course it doesn't matter because you've already recorded the amplified signal, so it doesn't really matter where you put it. But I've chosen no amplifier, as you can see, so that that doesn't screw it up because that would make it sound tremendously horrible. But I have delay here, and the delay is 20 milliseconds with a feedback of 25 and mixed in at 30%. So we can solo the lead, and I'll show you. <laughs> The delay definitely like beefs up a solo a little bit and makes it sound cool, which is just my basically my one tip since I didn't do any processing on these things. Uh, my tip is, you know, get a microphone that can handle a high SPL like an SM57, and I'll link to an SM57 in the description. Point it at the speaker cabinet, and you can do more mixing. I mean, I'm not saying don't mix your electric guitars. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, if you record them fine, you get decent levels. Uh, you can make a mix. I mean, I did these five tracks and this contact and the final mix in less than 30 minutes, about 30 minutes, start to finish until export. So I hope that you found this useful. This isn't like the holy grail of recording electric guitar and Cubase. It's just, you know, one man's opinion. But, you know, I think that if you have a SM57 and you have a decent audio interface and you just point that thing right at your speaker cabinets, you're going to end up with some decent sounding guitars. And the mix, don't sweat that, you know. You can learn more and more about how to mix electric guitar, but this is just how to record electric guitar in Cubase. And the main takeaway from software is that you can use VST amp rack effects after the fact, even if you don't record like direct in or use any of the amps, you can use the effects. And I hope you found this useful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.